Hello my friends, there's the chance for Ukrainian forces to unblock the Bakhmut city, which is partially blocked by the Wagner. First of all, we get this information from the leader of the Wagner soldiers, Prigozhin, and he stated that Ukraine created four extra forces to try to block and encircle the Wagner forces around the Bakhmut city. One of the groups is based now in Slavansk, it's the 67th Brigade, and in Siversk there is the 66th and 81st Brigade. Also, there are some elite forces in Chasiv Yar, and that is why Wagner stack on the south. They had some success on the north, however, but for the recent three days there is no significant movement from the Wagner side. And the fourth group Ukraine created near to Konstantinivka. And as you can see, Russia is pushing from two of the main directions towards the Chasov Yar to try to cut the supply line for the Ukrainian forces towards the Bakhmut city and also they're pushing from Solodar and Krasnohara. And Prigozhin said that Ukrainian forces may cut Wagner's out from the Bakhmut by some sort of the counterattack from Siversk, Slavyansk and also Chasov Yar directly to the south and also Konstantinivka from this direction. Depends on how successful those attacks will be, they might create some sort of the pie, as Prigozhin said. Wagner's may partially encircle the Bakhmut city, but Ukrainian forces may create the outer ring over here if this attack would be successful from two of those directions and lock the Wagner army out from the supplies. Again, we have this information for now from the enemy side, and I think Prigozhin wants to get more reinforcements and ammunition supplies, and also he said that Russia should enter this war out here in the Bakhmut area, because for now there's just a Wagner group that is unable to secure their flanks. So the variant with this large encirclement is not unreal. And there was the major meeting today inside the Russian army and Prigozhin sent the representative from the Wagner army, but Prigozhin's guy was just pulled out from the meeting and he was not even in the building. Russian generals do not want to share the information with the Wagner soldiers and again it's one more step towards the bigger conflict between the regular Russian army and the Wagner group. Also today there was the big meeting with the Ukrainian generals and commanders and also President Zelensky. President Zelensky asked our generals whether it's possible to hold in Bakhmut and the Ukrainian generals said that they will hold the city. So now there is no question whether the Ukrainian army would withdraw from the Bakhmut city or not. Officially, we have the confirmation from our general command that Ukraine will continue to defend the Bakhmut city as long as possible and there could be the scenario for a potential counterattack, as I said to you before. Because some of the elite units were moved there to reinforce the region and it's not done on a casual manner. But anyways, there could be the scenario of complete encirclement of the city and Ukraine may not counterattack by saving the forces for the possible counterattack in other place. Unfortunately, we don't have enough weapons and heavy tanks to attack massively in that case, but still we have some equipment to withstand the Bahamut city for some time. The main idea here for Ukraine is to win the time before the main weaponry comes to our army. And it should be at late April or May. And Prigozhin also said if they fail this operation in Bahamut, all of the war will be finished for the Russian Federation because as the spring Ukrainian army will unlock the resources and go on a massive counterattack with a total frontline collapse for the Russian Federation and self-proclaimed LPR and DPR republics. So it could be the real decisive moment for Ukraine in this war. If we lose Bakhmut, we just lose one of the cities. If we win this battle and counterattack and encircle the Wagner forces, my friends, there's the huge chance for us to go to Donetsk and Luhansk in that case. And let's go to the Bakhmut city itself and to the timeline. You'll see that for today there was no uh, big changes out there. And just forget about this part of the city 
its total loss for Ukrainian forces. It's already in a gray area and soon Wagner forces will take control over this part just a matter of time and the main thing that they're not moving from the north or from the south recently for three days no movement at all they cannot move from the south because now we have the significant group of the forces in Ivanovsk and Chasafiar they cannot go from the north directly towards the Bakhmut city because we blown up the dam and now there's the quite wide river on the way for the Russian soldiers and this group of Ukrainian forces provides the protection against the full encirclement of the Bakhmut city. That is why the enemy there just stack and also weather plays not a good role for the attacking side, but very nice for defense. It was a terrible video today released to, to the public by the Russian side. This is the Ukrainian prisoner of war. He has no weapons in his hands, just a cigarette. And the final words of his was... Slava Ukraini, glory to Ukraine. And immediately after he said those words, he was shot by the Russian soldiers from AKs. Well, you can see that he has the cigarette in his mouth and he is standing in a hall. So it could be that it is the Ukrainian position that was taken by Russians or Russians just put the guy out there knowing that they will shoot him. So indeed the Ukrainian soldier, or it's better to say prisoner of war, understood what they're gonna do with him. Well the video is available on my telegram but I just blurred it because I don't want you to see the full uncensored scene. It is very very bad. And the fact that the Ukrainian prisoner of war didn't shout, didn't beg for mercy or didn't run and just say Slava Ukraini actually gives him a great honor and he for sure will be remembered he will be trended elsewhere as the spirit of ukrainian fighters but the revenge is imminent they lose the war and russia will collapse into the different states they will drink their own blood in civil war that is what i expect to be happen in the russian federation or with the russian federation and i might say that i want them to feel what we feel in ukraine there should be revenge after those cases there should be prosecutions and penalties not just to the russian command leadership or politicians there should be also punishment for those who conduct these uh, war crimes Oh my god, Ukraine is bombing Donbass and this should be the part of the rocket. Poor kids of Donbass, they were bombed for 8 years now, 9 years. Yes, it is the Russian propaganda media, but in this case I think they're wrong. We just supply some of the spare parts for the Mercedes Sprinter. Because actually this is the part of the gearbox of that model. And of course, speaking about the 8 years that Ukrainian army was dumping Donbass, just look at the current pictures of Donetsk, for example, which is the occupied city and compare it to Mariupol. And you will see who is really bombing the cities. This is the Wagner's official page in Vkontakte, the Russian Facebook, whatever. And here they ask for the rights against the governor of St. Petersburg. Prigozhin has the conflict with that governor and now it was put to the social media Wagner said, no, those are traitors, we need to get rid of those politicians. But the main thing here that the governor is actually Putin's friend and he represents the Putin's party in the parliament as well. I see more and more cracks in Russian elite and soon I'll probably film the video how Russia might collapse. According to financial terms, Russia afraid to get the ballistic missiles from Iranian side because in that case the United States might supply attackers rockets for Ukrainian army, which are proven to be very precise against any kind of the target and may fly for 300 kilometers away. In that case, Crimea is doomed for Russia. They might lose every military base in Crimea in that case. And here we see one more sign that Russian army is in despair because they sent 
T-62 tanks to the front lines, as well as the old school BTRs 50s that were designed in 50s. Well, I told you about the Leopard 1 tank that is not really nice against the T-72 modern versions, but against T-62 tank that is great. And since Russia lost half of their modern tanks, Leopard 1 may play a great role in this conflict, especially when you use it in a smart way for the maximum range distances, it may penetrate quite severe armor. Especially then it lacks in explosive reaction armor, like in T-62, some of those tanks were modernized to have that armor, but that particular one is outdated, Contact 5 that Russia uses even for T-72 tank is unable to hold the modern day shells. My friends, now press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, there are some of the links in the video description just below for you to do so. Thank you so much for your support and your help. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.